Hey guys, it's Danny. Welcome to another episode of What's in My Orchid Pot. Today, special edition, clay edition. So could it be good roots, bad roots, desiccated roots, or the one ring of power to rule them all? You know, the one that Mr. Frodo carries around for three movies straight just to dispose of it? What a waste. Anywho, only one way to find out. Let's get to it. So as I was saying, today is a special edition and so far we have been criticizing whatever we found in New Orchid pots, but now it is time to see my doing. Let's see how these orchids were doing in my pots. Since I am in the process of actually unpotting and gently repotting my orchids, I thought I should take you along so we see together what's been going on. Okay, first one. This is the Miltasia Shellop Tolkien and she's the most prone orchid to have this ring. And P.S. if you don't know who Tolkien is, well, he's the writer of the novels and Shellop is a character in the movie. It's a giant spider. I don't think I need to soak this medium. Oh, righty. So here we have some roots that are not in the worst condition, but not in the best condition either. It would appear this one is pretty affected by the desiccation and issues that I've been having lately. I'm really not pleased with it, so I think the change will be good. Alrighty, so since this orchid had a weird direction of growth, I actually made two divisions, which I will pot together. And sadly, we didn't find any ring of power, but we did find a ring. <laughs> actually didn't plan this pun. So there we go, we have the Fusarium ring, which let's just say is the worst ring we can find. So because this orchid is still kind of vigorous, it's not yet going away, she will be placed on the opposite side of my greenhouse where usually no orchid sits, except the Fusarium infected ones. And we're gonna keep her under observation to see how this disease develops. I have only a few orchids that I kept with Fusarium for research reasons and they are well isolated. This will sadly become one of them and sadly it will mean that when I see another shell up for sale, I will need to purchase it. Gotta love the irony though, it sucks that it has Fusarium, but I was inspired by her name to search for the ring of power or whatever. Behold, I find the ring of death, like Zayn puts it. You know, at this point I'm kind of over the whole anger and everything, because let's face it, we do mistakes, we need to pay for them to learn something. And at this point it's like, okay, I deserve it, it's okay. So I cleaned my tray, bathed it in alcohol, it's time to move on. Alrighty, next up, this little gem, this is the Oncidopsis Lazio. And I know it's in bloom, but it's a weird bloom. It's a flower spike that grows from the top, she has a new growth, new roots, it's actually the perfect time to repot it. And funny thing, she actually smells really, really nice. I had this one before and I lost it, and I didn't get this nice perfume out of the other one, but with this one, it's really great. So. Let's see what's inside the pot. First, let's see how attached she is. Oh, not very. Oh, she's a new orchid. There we go. Oh, these are... Okay. These are the old roots that I left on. You can see they look so bad, but they are, in fact, alive. Let me give you a focused look. You see, they have tips growing. And um, I do see that I missed a few roots. There are many new roots growing, as you can see, new root tips. This one is actually doing pretty great. So I actually decided to cut away almost all of the old roots because this orchid is just growing such a nice root system, perfectly adapted to my medium, and more roots to come from this new growth. So the older roots really had no purpose at this point, and since they were old and kind of not in the best condition, they would have just spoiled the medium. So we're good. This is one vigorous little fella, and no point in checking for Fusarium because I did that already when I purchased this orchid, it had another tiny pseudobulb in the back. I cut it, no fusarium, I know she's clean, um, and therefore a nice root system. Okay, P.S. Since these pebbles are kind of heavy, there's really no need to stake my orchids anymore, none of them. You see? She's actually really stable and you cannot say she has a deep root system. So yeah, the pebbles fix yet another issue I didn't expect them to fix. And by the way, I'm using a lighter layer of pebbles right now just to see the evaporation rate and the drying rate, just for some comparison reasons. I can always remove or add more, so that's okay. So this is a pretty good looking orchid, but still no ring of power. Alrighty, the next orchid I wanna repot is a Calia orchid. This is the really pretty pink Calia. I have no idea for this one, it smells really Really nice. She's currently sitting in pretty bright light as you can see. But anyway, the reason I want to repot this one is because she is starting to grow new roots from these new growths. She has a really pretty aerial root here, but the new roots that are touching the medium get the damage. So yeah, I'm not happy with that. A little side note, all of the orchids that I transplanted in the new setup 
no more damage, nothing new. That's really nice, uh, but I have a feeling this orchid is attached. Oh, it's not attached a lot, actually. Let's see. Ah, oh, there we go. So we do have some roots, but not the best roots. Well, Kelias are those types of orchids which I do let dry out a lot more than others. So I cannot say I'm surprised, but also I'm noticing something else. I actually don't need to let this medium completely dry out for the roots to become dry. Even if it's a little bit damp, the roots can be almost dry. And the medium is damp enough that it doesn't suck the moisture from the roots, but it doesn't really give any moisture either. So with the clear pots, I will be able to see when the medium is almost completely dry and I don't think I'm gonna let it go this bone dry anymore. Now, even though the roots are not in the best of shape, uh, they're not dead or rotting in any way. So I'm just gonna let them be. And of course, I'm not gonna remove any of this medium that the roots already attached to. I'm just gonna see if there is any root. Oh, this one is still alive. I'm just going to see if any root is dead. No, this is not dead. I don't have dead roots on this orchid, just not the happiest roots. So I'm just gonna let it be and pot it like it is. And my orchid is potted. Did I find any rings? No. Which is both a good news and a bad news, right? Again, no need to test for a fusarium because I already did uh, a few months ago. You can see the cut wound here. There is no ring and you can see a sort of pigmentation in the center. That's not fusarium. When you apply hydrogen peroxide to live tissue, Sometimes it does redden up because hydrogen peroxide kind of burns a little layer of the tissue. That's what sterilizes actually the tissue. It kills a layer. And particularly when you have plants which do tend to redden up in bright light, they have the red pigment a little bit more abundantly than others. You do get a sort of reddening of the stem after you apply hydrogen peroxide. Doesn't mean it's fusarium, so everything is okay. So this work it is done, but I do want to perform another thing, another step before I put her back on the shelf. I purchased, I found actually some white plastic pots, decorative pots. They have a sort of a bump. Do you see it? This one. And as it just so happens, the pots do not sit properly. So what I need to do is cut those bumps. I don't get it completely. I think I'm gonna need to buy a wire cutter because it will sit flush with the pot, but it's the best I can do. So I'll show you what I intend to do with the decorative pot. It does have a purpose. It's not because it's pretty, although it's pretty as well. So there are quite a few reasons for the decorative pot. And yes, it looks pretty and I really like it. You guys, thank you so much for helping me out decide what type of pots to get. White is awesome. Anyway, one of the purposes is to maintain the inside of the pot as shady as possible so I don't get excessive algae accumulations. But also, it gives me the possibility to do a proper flush really fast and really easy. I can now absolutely flush with osmosis water and I can perform the flush that I actually perform. Of course, water needs to run and drain through the pot, but salts also need time to dissolve in. Maybe just flushing it at the sink is not enough time. So what I like to do is just let the pot sit in osmosis water, give a chance for those salts to actually dissolve and at the end, just jiggle the pot a bit and drain it. And I think it's a little bit better than just running water through the pot for a few seconds. Not to mention it's more economical and I don't need to spend a lot of osmosis water and I can fully flush with osmosis water. I'm pretty happy. It's a pretty nice feeling for a change. Anyway, so no ring of power, but also no ring of death. Hey, you win some, you lose some. Okay, another one that I really wanna repot, I think it's gonna be the last part today, is this one that I received. It's a beautiful one. This is a Brassavola nodosa, cross with Lelia purpurata variety Carnia 4N. This is a really good orchid. It has some really great genetics, at least on paper. Uh, thank you so much for sending this my way. I think I'm gonna love this orchid a lot. So she is in very active growth mode right now. She's producing new roots. That's why I wanna repot her now. You can see she has quite a lot of algae on top. Now, I cannot really get rid of those algae that well. Even if I boil the medium, there's still some algae. So I'll just get rid of the first layer and come back with the actual repotting. So we have some good roots and some bad roots on this orchid. Compared to others, she is looking quite okay. And again, I wanna give this one a well-deserved flush, a good soak. So we just make sure we remove salts and other things. 
Now this doesn't mean that I will soak my orchids at each watering, there's really no need to. But I think once a month perhaps it is a very good idea for me to absolutely flush them like this, soak them with osmosis water and I think overall it's just gonna be better for me. Alrighty guys, let's end it here. Thank you for watching this video, a little longer than usual for this series. But yeah, I hope you got something useful out of this video, or at least it was entertaining. So yeah, if you've enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe to my channel for daily orchids and plants videos and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. Join us once again next time when the search for the ring of power continues because I don't believe Frodo disposed of it. I just don't.